There's far more to Mortal Kombat than what lies on the surface. There are countless stories about the property that you might not have read in your favorite game magazine or heard about on the news. These tales look more closely at how Mortal Kombat came to be. The world of game development looks a whole lot like movie production these days. There are games with enormous budgets both for development and for marketing. There are directors piecing together important cinematic moments, along with the writers who are putting together a script that tells a compelling story. And the entire process from start to finish can take years. The very first Mortal Kombat game, though, didn't take much time at all to complete. The team knocked it out in 10 months. When you think about it, that fact is fairly stunning. The folks at Midway Entertainment not only managed to create a competent fighting game in that amount of time, but also dreamed up interesting characters and a vibe that made the game stand out from everything else on the market. All that in less than a year. It's hard to deny that the Mortal Kombat series has leaned into the sex appeal of its female characters. One only has to look at the revealing outfits worn by Melina, Katana, and Jade to get the message. Mortal Kombat isn't the only fighting game to do this, but the series did take things a little further than some of the other hyper-stylized fighting games in one specific way. It allowed one of its characters, Melina, to appear in Playboy. The senior editor of Playboy at the time, Scott Alexander, defended the character's inclusion in the magazine while talking to Fox News. Part of the thrust of the piece is that gaming is not just for kids. We want to cover them from the perspective of an adult who has a life. We're not writing video game reviews for kids who play 5 hours a day. We're writing for the grown-up who may play 5 hours a week, if that much. Before almost every video game trailer, we're treated to a short 1-2 second reminder that video games have changed a lot since the Atari days. You've probably heard a quick rated T for teens in those trailers slipped in before the part you actually want to watch begins. It's there thanks to the ESRB, the Entertainment Software Rating Board. And given what we've talked about already, it might not surprise you to know that Mortal Kombat is the reason the ESRB exists today. Mortal Kombat's blood, gore, and violence made the game a favorite for fighting game fans. It also drew the ire of both politicians and parents of younger children who felt the game could be a negative influence and could potentially inspire violence in those who played it. The dialogue around Mortal Kombat and video games in general got to the point where the industry feared government regulation. In order to stave that prospect off, several large video game companies came together in 1994 and created the ESRB in a form of self-regulation. The ESRB rates games and puts stickers on the box, and the government doesn't tell video games what they can and cannot include. It's worked so far. Somehow, someway, a ridiculous internet meme collided with a video game's marketing push, and Shaggy Rogers of Scooby-Doo fame became fans' number one pick for a new character to be added to the new Mortal Kombat. Even more surprisingly, it seemed as though we might actually get Shaggy in a Mortal Kombat game. It seemed insane at first. Ed Boon, the director of Mortal Kombat 11, even dismissed the idea of Shaggy in Mortal Kombat when it first entered his Twitter feed. But over the course of a few days, a change.org petition for Shaggy's inclusion in MK11 blew past 300,000 signatures, and Ed Boon himself seemed to have fun with the concept. Tweeting out mock-ups of Shaggy in the game, as well as photos of Scooby himself as a potential sidekick. Eventually, though, the dream came to an end. On a Mortal Kombat 11 reveal stream, NeverRealm Studios community manager Tyler Lansdowne ended the madness. What I said was not true. Shaggy will not be in the game at all, ever. Sorry. Or maybe that's just what they want us to think. The development of Mortal Kombat was simply ahead of its time. Midway didn't draw the characters used in-game. Instead, they were scanned in using real actors. The animations were actually movements performed by those actors, and they lent an air of authenticity to every kick and punch you saw during the game. Those actors, like those in the movie business, got paid. Just not as much as they wanted. A 1997 lawsuit saw three of the actors from Mortal Kombat and Mortal Kombat 2 charging that Midway had shortchanged them. Philip On, Elizabeth Malaki, and Catalin Zamia, who modeled Shang Tsung, Sonya Blade, and Katana respectively, felt they had only granted use of their likenesses for the arcade versions of Mortal Kombat. The home console versions of the game they believed were completely outside of the agreements they signed. Therefore, they felt they were owed more money. Unfortunately, they lost. The judge in the case sided with Midway, awarding the company a summary judgment. How can you get around actors and all that pesky money they want from you? Stop using real people. In all seriousness, finding someone who looks like Mortal Kombat character Goro would be difficult. He's absolutely enormous, not to mention the small fact that he has four arms. So when it came time for the folks at Midway to put Goro in the first game, they came up with a unique solution. They made him out of clay. Midway used stop-motion animation to capture Goro's movements. They moved Clay Goro into a pose, captured an image, and then adjusted his pose before capturing another image. All of the pictures strung together created the animations used by Goro in the game. Sonya Blade in Mortal Kombat 11 differs from other females on the roster in a few very noticeable ways. Her clothing, for starters, is not remotely as revealing as her outfits in MK9. 
and there's an aura about Sonya Blade, a sense that she believes she's the toughest competitor on the entire roster. But there's a good reason for that. It's because this iteration of Sonya Blade is voiced by none other than Ronda Rousey, the former UFC fighting champion and current professional wrestler. Sonya Blade was the first like kick-ass girl that I saw come onto the scene, and I've always admired her and admittedly kind of emulated her. Sonya Blade, much like Ronda Rousey herself, is tough. Sonya, like Rousey, also isn't afraid to talk a little trash. Whether Sonya can back it up as well as Ronda Rousey, though, that'll depend on you, the player. He's dark and mysterious and enjoys long fights on the beach. Or anywhere else. He's noob Cybot, and his story is fascinating. According to Mortal Kombat lore, there have been a few different Sub-Zeros. Noob was the first, appearing originally in the first Mortal Kombat game. The Sub-Zero that exists now is his little brother, and Noob is just Noob now. How he got his name, though, is the best part about Noob Cybot. His moniker is comprised of the last names of two Mortal Kombat creators, Ed Boon and John Tobias. Simply reverse the letters in both Boon and Tobias, and ta-da, you've got it! Later games of the franchise have seen Noob's last name mysteriously missing. This likely has to do with Tobias and the number of Midway staff members leaving the company in 1999, possibly due to fan backlash or the studio finally owning up to Tobias's prominent history in helping create MK's main storyline, themes, settings, and character designs for the first four Mortal Kombats, NetherRealm has brought back Noob Cybot's full name in MK11. Midway Games was a company behind several huge series in the 90s. In addition to the Mortal Kombat franchise, Midway laid claim to arcade and console classics like NBA Jam, NFL Blitz, and Hydro Thunder. It was hard to go to an arcade or shop the video game section of a store without seeing a Midway title. Unfortunately, the good times didn't last forever for Midway. In 2009, after over 50 years in business, Midway filed for bankruptcy, with most of its assets going to Warner Bros. Interactive Entertainment. It was certainly sad to see Midway close up shop, but its demise didn't spell disaster for the Mortal Kombat franchise. Warner Bros. has been a fairly good steward of the IP as shown by its 2011 release of the Mortal Kombat reboot. Many MK characters also starred in a mashup fighting series, Injustice, which uniquely pitted those in the Mortal Kombat universe against characters from the DC Comics universe. In gratitude for my flawless victory, Batman offered the Justice League's aid. Australia has always had a weird relationship with video games, and it's become notorious for banning certain titles at a drop of the hat. It didn't come as much of a surprise then that 2011's Mortal Kombat ran afoul of the government in Australia, which refused classification of the game. To be clear, refusing classification doesn't make obtaining or playing the game illegal. What it does is prevent the game from being advertised and sold in Australia. It's all but a ban as consumers in the country are forced to import the game from other countries. We've already told you about Noob Cybot, a character created using the names of Ed Boon and John Tobias. But did you know that there's another long-time Mortal Kombat character with a similarly interesting backstory? This one wasn't built to pay homage to a person. Rather, he was a sort of joke come to life. A reference to a bit of code used by Ed Boon in the original Mortal Kombat. His name is Ermac, or as many knew him before, Ermax. Ermax was a phrase coined by Ed Boon as a shortening of Error Macro, and in Mortal Kombat, Boon's Ermax code was built to help him catch errors during the game's development. Early version of the game made several mentions to the Ermax code, and it didn't take long for the game's press to speculate about the possibility of a hidden character. What could it be? Ed Boon tried to tell everyone that Ermac wasn't a real character. In fact, a message included in Mortal Kombat 2 stated very clearly that Ermac does not exist, but that just fueled the fire. In Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3, Boon finally relented and added Ermac to the roster as a playable character. The Mortal Kombat roster is already pretty substantial, which is why the team behind the series takes care when adding new characters. Fresh faces only come around when it makes sense for the role that character can play in the game, and in the larger Mortal Kombat mythology. But if you're tired of playing with the same cast of characters, we have some good news for you. Mortal Kombat is adding at least one new character, and his name is Gearus. Gearus is unique in the world of Mortal Kombat in that he can affect the flow of time. So here's a nightmare scenario for you. Imagine trying to rally against an opponent who is using Gearus, only to see him use one of his new abilities, Lost Time. That subtracts 30 seconds from the match timer, and suddenly, you could be as little as 9 seconds away from a loss. Gearus also has another ability called Spare Time, which adds 30 seconds to the clock. Are you up on health, simply hoping to run out the clock? That extra 30 seconds could help Gearus cut you down to size. With abilities like that, it's clear Gearus will be a real force on the MK11 roster. 
Another new fighter coming to Mortal Kombat 11 is a collector, a bizarre warrior from Outworld who has six arms. You'd better keep an eye out, as those extra limbs tend to pull out a variety of weapons from the collector's backpack filled with otherworldly artifacts. Cetrion is an Elder God making her Mortal Kombat debut as well. She basically looks and fights like Poison Ivy, mixed with the Avatar. Fans who are hoping that Tremor would make a return for MK11 will be happy to see that Cetrion used a lot of rocks in her elemental offense. It looks like Johnny Cage and the rest of the classic characters are going to have their hands full. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more SVG videos about your favorite video games are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.